Okay, welcome to this edition of Option View Essentials. My name is Ken Dole, and we'll be talking a bit about, about the program in general today, about Option View 7, and also uh, going to be specializing in Backtrader, but I want to first of all approach it from the perspective of just starting brand new with the program. So what you see here is if you loaded the program for the first time, just started it up and you're all connected, and this is what you'll see. So how do you progress from here to being able to function with option view and uh, eventually run a back test and uh, work out a strategy that's going to benefit from our raging bull market that we have now? Seems to be no end to it, so we want to try and uh, devise a strategy that's going to capture uh, some of that upside move that we're having, enjoying, and uh, without a lot of risk. So that's going to be the objective today. But we'll start out just from the perspective of if you're brand new, you've never used it before, how do you get it set up? And what we're looking at now is that initial screen. So what we can do is create tabs here. If you want to get symbols into the program, um, the first and most basic way would just be to click anywhere and click insert on your keyboard. If I typed another symbol in here, there we go. So now it's getting quotes. And you can always tell if you're connected to our servers, and that's real important because you're not going to get data otherwise. In the uh, very upper right corner, we see NV2. That stands for NetView2. That's, uh, we have 11 servers, actually, and the, the number is the number of the server. And then this number here is important also. This tells you how many symbols you are using. An option view, the basic uh, real-time data service, allows a thousand symbols to be in use at any time in feeding data. Right now, we see that I'm using 73 symbols. So that number, if you uh, kind of keep, an, keep your eye on that as you open up a matrix, for example, if I open up the spy matrix here, huge number of options, it's going to jump way up to 323. And close it, and it goes back down to 73. So you kind of have to keep an eye on that. If you open up a matrix or too many matrices, uh, <clears throat> and you're wondering why it's not getting any data, that, that's one possible reason. And if you do have a data slowdown or a stoppage, you want to check this box here. This is your quote reception window. And just make sure it says you're currently connected to a server in there, and that's your, if you're getting real-time data, that at least these first five boxes are checked. If they're not checked, that means you're not getting real-time data. See, I've got all of them checked here, but normally it would just be these for the initial program trial. You would see these first five there checked off. Okay, so now we can add symbols one at a time. How do we get a whole list in here? Because it can be laborious. Say you had a thousand symbols or 500 or so you wanted to put in, or you just create a list. How do you do that? relatively quickly. Well, here's one way. We have some uh, search features in the program. You can use survey or opscan to generate a list and then bring it in to your quote display. So the first step of doing that and keeping it organized would be to right-click on the bottom bar here and add a tab. So we'll call this one survey1. <clears throat> And then I can create a header bar, and this is important also because this keeps your symbols grouped according to categories and allows you to do other sorting features within that grouping. So what we would do is just hold the shift key down, type pound, and then we'll call it uh, we'll call it high DVO stocks. And then. Uh, <clears throat> We're going to bring in some stocks based on this search, and this is one of our uh, search functions that brings in, uh, searches the database of optionable stocks. So for greatest value of dollar volume of stock, stocks, uh, or options traded rather, we can pick them based on that, and it'll also sort them based on that greatest dollar volume of options to create a list now. We're just going to create the list, and then we can isolate a certain category here. In this case, we're just going to do stocks. Click go. I'm going to clear this out so you can see how it runs. And then click go. 
So there's our list. <clears throat> you can see it brought in according to this DVO, which is dollar volume of options. Uh, we specified the list to have at least a minimum of 100. And this is an important number in option view because if you're trading options, you want high volume, high liquidity in your options in order to uh, execute properly. So we're going to search for only stocks that have a minimum of 100,000 because this is in thousands now. So the 100 means it's 100,000 total dollar volume of options per day on average. And you see that number here. So that would be 131 million for the spiders. But we want at least 100,000 for, for an asset to make the list. So I, uh, I said it could uh, generate as many as 50 items. So we did get all 50, I believe. Yeah, so there they all are. So in order to bring them into, uh, uh, you can bring them in one at a time, but if you want to bring the whole list in, just click the first one, slide down to the bottom with the scroll bar, hold the shift key down and click the last one, then click insert. It doesn't look like it did anything, but if we go back to the quotes display, and you can always navigate around in the program using the window tab, that's the most efficient way to navigate the program is to use this window tab. It tells you all your open windows down in this section here. So we see the quotes display there. Now you see it brought these in uh, under this grouping that we have, under this new tab that we created, Survey 1. We now have high DVO stocks, and all 50 of them are in there. So now if I wanted to view these stocks according to sort them, I could sort them according to any of these categories here on the header bar. Uh, I can also view a price chart of them and then sequentially go down the list. So I'll show you that in a minute. But let's say we just wanted to sort according to the last price. Just put your cursor right on the, uh, the grouping bar, just above, just below last, actually, just on that grouping bar and right click. Now they're all sorted according to highest price. So if you wanted high price stocks that you're going to use for your test, there they are. And the next thing we want to do is uh, update all the price charts so that when we're going through them, we don't have to wait for each chart. So we could do that by going to Net View Update Price Chart Files and then select uh, categories. So we're going to just going to use this middle grouping, which brings in whatever grouping you're in, highlighted in, in the program. It's going to bring in starting with this, this category here. I'll just click Go. So now it's going to update all of these price charts. So now what we can do is actually view a price chart and then scroll using the Next button. And it quickly just scroll through. So let me also show you, so I'm going to go back to the close display for a minute here. Let me show you how you can bring in something from OpScan now. Because the premise of the uh, demonstration today is we're going to create a strategy for taking advantage of a bull market with relatively low risk. So I want to use OpScan to generate a list. So I'm going to create another tab here and call it OpScan1. And again, I'll create the uh, grouping header bar. We'll call it uh, High IV stocks, IV being implied volatility. And now I'm going to go to OpScan, and I took the liberty of before the demonstration creating a customized formula in our OpScan search, which searches the entire universe of available stocks, whether they have options or not. And let me just show you this feature just briefly here. Uh, if we click Modify, we can create a new uh, we can modify any existing formula, or we can create a new one by just click, clicking New here and naming it whatever and start. You just have to learn the syntax, which is not real hard. Uh, here is the, in the program manual, which is available from our website, optionview.com. I'm on page uh, 217 here in the program manual, the PDF version of it. And it gives you a list of all the option underlying specific parameters, and then on the next page, option specific parameters. Uh, so that's how you would learn how to create an OpScan formula 
just play around with the uh, so back to the formula that I created here you can see that uh, the first sort category pick category rather is last year that's last underlying it has to be greater than 50 we want higher price stocks for this uh, back test and we want the implied volatility the IV to be greater than the statistical volatility the SV so that's uh, pick two pick parameter two and then uh, the next one is very important it's going to be the average total dollar volume over 10 days has to be greater than a thousand and that is in thousands so we're going to pull out very high volume option trading stocks from this list and then we're going to sort it according to uh, a ratio of IV to SV so in other words we want the implied volatility to be higher than the statistical volatility is going to put those at the top of our list and then we're going to show the underlying price last U and then the implied volatility and the statistical volatility so if I click OK and run this it's going to pull up the report and let's go ahead and open it up so there's our list it created and you can see it's got a sort value there there's the symbol in sort value is 1.86 that means the uh, IV is 86 percent higher than the statistical volatility IV is higher than the SV by 86 percent so it's sorted according to that category so now I want to bring that list into the quotes display <clears throat> so again I highlight the first one scroll down and it created a list of 74 stocks shift highlight the, click the last one it highlights them all click insert back to my quotes display using the window tab quotes display you can see now it brought all of them in into this new grouping we just created in this new tab top scan one so now if I want to create a price chart for all of these without having to wait each time it updates the price chart just click net view update price chart files again under selected files it pulls in everything in one particular uh, grouping in your quotes display by clicking this middle button then click go it's going to go through the list now and update so while it's doing that let's talk about the account feature because we're going to be using that next when we get into backtrader let me just start out by saying we're going to get in backtrader in just a moment here let me just start out by saying that backtrader is multi-purpose it gives you uh, delayed data quote view is our real-time data service a uh, back trader is our delayed data service it gives a uh, 30 to 60 minute delayed data anytime during the day if you open up a, a matrix or a quotes display it's going to pull data based on their most recent 30 day period it, it uh, basically takes a snapshot our servers are set up to take a snapshot of all prices and option data every half hour on the half hour so for example if uh, at three o'clock our t central time the market closed we wouldn't see the closing prices in back trader until after 330 or 332 it takes a couple minutes for it to run and then we would start getting the closing prices in back trader same any time during the day but after that period you should pull all the closing prices both in the, in the option matrix and in the quotes display so that's the first thing and you don't have to actually go into backtrader previous versions you had to go into you have to get into backtrader in order to uh, see any delayed data now you will see it just by opening anything it will automatically pull that delayed data without even being in backtrader what it does with the advantage to going into backtrader now allows you to change the time you're looking at if you just leave it out of backtrader mode it'll pull the most recent delayed data but when you click net view which we'll be able to do here in just a minute when it finishes up the list uh, then we can actually enter backtrader and uh, start uh, navigating through time and that's the advantage that's so now it's completed I can click net view backtrader and set a date I'm going to use um, the hotkey just to back up a shift uh, less than sign takes it back a year and then the shift left bracket takes it back month at a time I'm going to go back to January and then the left bracket goes back one day at a time so I'm just going to go back to the beginning of January 
2012 using the hotkeys that I just described. And we're going to start it up. So this little box remains open. When you're in back trader mode and you're navigating through time, this little window remains open. And this is your way to advance or retreat in time. And the S button is for a one half hour advance, backward one half hour, reverse S. And forward D is one day forward, and backward D one day backward. So that delayed updates, you can put it on either delayed or immediate updates. I prefer delayed updates. It allows you to click multiple times before it activates, executes the command. So I could click forward two days at a time or two half hour segments at a time. And uh, that, it just takes a couple of seconds once you have it in delayed updates. Now I want to start looking uh, for candidates here. <clears throat> Uh, we created the list in real time because OpScan does not work in back trader mode. So I just created a list of stocks, possible candidates basically. And now I want to start culling these and looking for uh, stocks that I can use in my strategy. The strategy, which we're going to talk about in just a minute here, I've already outlined in a Word document. So I'm going to document uh, the, the approach, the strategy that I'm going to test in a separate document, not in option view itself. But I'm going to record all the results using this technique that I'm going to describe right now. So I'll do that right now. So we're going to set up a new account. Just click on the Info tab. This is your account information box. Click New Account. And I'm going to call this uh, Naked. The strategy we're going to use to capture uh, the bull market run that we're having without a lot of risk is Naked Puts. So I'll just call this Naked Puts Test 1. And we're going to put in uh, 200,000 in there. You need a bit of capital to do this approach effectively and diversify. You can do it with less, but to do it effectively and diversify properly, you would need about that much. So uh, that's what we're going to start with. And we can set all these earnings rates, charge rates, et cetera, to zero effectively. Pretty close anyway. So I'm going to take the slippage out. We could include slippage, but I prefer to just manually add in slippage after the test is over rather than being subject to slippage initially. I want to just see what the graph looks like without slippage included. And then the commission we will include. And you can define the commissions down here under the schedule button. You can see I've got $5 for stocks, flat fee, a dollar per option, no base fee or minimum. Base fee is a, a set amount. It's not going to increase or decrease based on how many options you trade. A minimum, though, remains uh, uh, flexible. So as you increase the number of contracts, that minimum value would eventually be surpassed, and you would start trading just based on the per option amount. So that's the difference there. I just put in a dollar per contract. That, that's what I have with Thinkorswim, no minimum. And now we're set to go. Also, the, I checked this box here, gain loss, to include previously realized gain losses, which is very useful if you're running a long-term test, back test. I'll show you how that works. And click OK. Now we're set up with an account. The next thing I want to do is open up status. Status is what allows us to record the value of the account as we progress through the back test. And uh, if we don't keep status open, it'll just have a, it will still create a graph, but it'll just have no data and essentially it have no data points. It'll just go from where we're starting it to the end with a straight line. It'll give a starting and ending value with nothing in between. So what you want to do here is keep status open and create a performance graph. So we want to bring in the date. We can just click the little box here to bring in the date we're starting at in Backtrader. And we can put the ending date to be uh, one year forward. What I'll do is just create a one year test frame here. Uh, okay, now we're set. So we've got a one year test period starting on January 3rd, 2012. Click OK. Now the next thing we want to do is uh, find some candidates. So I'm going to go back to the close display, keeping all these other windows open by using the window tab, navigating back using the close the window tab to close display and start view, viewing the uh, price charts of all these stocks I, I brought in for my OpScan list. And what I did uh, is set up a benchmark uh, 
that I want it, I want bullish stocks. So the, the parameter for the test here is going to be stocks that are above their 200-day moving average. So here's the, uh, the test I want to run. I created this Word document and just uh, called it the same name as the account I created, so that way you have a record of your research this way. And so what we're doing here is we're using various stocks and ETFs, and we're going to sell naked puts, out of the money naked puts. The objective here is to generate 5% per month return on the invested capital. <clears throat> and then the uh, test period is going to be, as I already stated, one year. An account size, actually I'm changing that to 200. For the larger price stocks to diversify, we really need, if, if you had less capital, you could still do this approach, you just need to use smaller price stocks, otherwise the percentages would be, you wouldn't be able to do as much diversification, basically. So for slippage and commissions, we're going to set slippage to none. Commissions already described $1 per contract, no minimum. The rules of the strategy tests are as follows. We're going to find stocks that are above their 200-day moving average. We're looking for bullish stocks. That's a pretty good benchmark to determine if a stock is bullish or not, if it's above its 200-day. If it's below it, we'll just throw it out. So we want to use 5% of the account. So in other words, we'd have room for 20 different uh, stocks, naked puts. So that should diversify us pretty well. Uh, the third rule, use options that are 30 to 60 days out. 30 to 60 day window, we want to sell options in that time frame. And then we're going to use out of the money options that give at least 80% probability of profit. That keeps uh, us from having a lot of drawdowns as, as, if a particular stock moves against us. It gives us a little cushion. So that's where that low risk, relatively low risk uh, in a, during a bull market, trying to capture some return in a bull market with relatively low risk. We're gonna, because we're going to have a high probability of success here, we're using out of the money puts. So we're going to set the profit target at 80% of the premium collected. In other words, if I sell an option for $2, I'm not going to wait for expiration. I'm going to close it out at a buck 60, 80% of the total value that I collected. And we're going to use options with at least 25 days remaining. Uh, sorry, wait a minute. 30 days of time remaining to expiration. <clears throat> So close and roll the put down to an out-of-the-money strike. That's the next rule. If, it, if the short strike gets hit, that's our stop. We're not going to sit there and watch it go and develop a massive loss, which can certainly happen. Uh, if the out-of-the-money, if the strike gets hit, then we move it down to another strike out of the money again with at least 30 days remaining. Same expiration if it still has 30 days or more, but move it out to the next expiration if it doesn't. And then we're going to close all trades if the account draws down more than 20% in any 30-day period. So we'll have to kind of keep an eye on the overall account uh, equity curve, the account value. What we want to do is just here avoid a bear market. We don't want to be doing this approach in a bear market. It doesn't work. So that's the one Achilles heel. It's got to be a bull market or at least not a bear market for this to work. So there's our rules. So I saved all that. And if you wanted to create a second test, which we may or may not have time to do today, but um, if you did, then just call it Naked Pet. You could just rename this document, Naked Put Test 2, rename it, and change it whatever rules you need without retyping the entire thing. Just tweak the rules a little bit according to what you thought would work based on what you just did. So that way you can generate a series of tests and then uh, refine your approach. So now, based on those rules, we're going to look for stocks uh, that are above their 200-day. The way I set this up in the price chart is to click on this button here for indicators. Under moving averages, click settings. And then we're going to put in the 50-day and the 200-day is the red line. You have to, have to just check those boxes there. Click OK. And then uh, to display those moving averages, you see they disappeared there or to put them back in, just click the fifth button there from the, from the right. So now we've got this stock I could use. It's got a, a lot of dollar, it's got a high volume of options trading, 1.599 million per day on average. 
So we could use this if I wanted to to start out with that one then. Looks like it's uh, on a major tear here, so we'll click open up the matrix. And this would be the, the first expiration with more than 30 days. I'm going to use an out-of-the-money option, and we want to generate a probability of profit of greater than 80%. And I can use up to 5% of the, or $10,000, 5% of 200000 So I'm going to use about $10,000 per asset. If I sold, uh, we'll just start it with five. That wouldn't be enough. We could sell up to, looks like 25 of these. Or 20, maybe. I'm oh, sorry, minus 20. Does that give us a probability of profit of greater than 80%? You see on the graph now, I just clicked Analyze. Let's back up here, and I went a little quick. Uh, so once we type in the trade column in the matrix, this is a proposed trade. We haven't actually recorded this trade yet. We're just looking at it. That's in the trade column. We uh, want to click on the Analyze. If you click on the T button or the B, it'll show your proposed trade uh, by clicking Analyze the graph here. So from this graph, we can see what the yield would be at expiration. If it expired worthless, we would make 19%. And then over on the left, under current bell results, you have to be a little careful because sometimes it'll be on target results. It's hidden. In that case, you have to click on it again, current bell results. Probability of profit, P.P. .P is 90%. That fits our criterion. So we could go ahead and uh, we could actually move this up one strike. It'll make a little bit, little bit higher margin, which is fine. I just want to make sure now, because we had a little bit more room below 10,000 there. And so now we've got an 87% probability. We're going to make 23%. So we'll go ahead and convert that trade. That's our first, first asset that we have something for now. Now we're going to go back to the quotes display and move on to the next one, price chart next. Uh, okay. We want to get the price chart going here. Uh, we can skip that one. Here's our next asset, Cree, and it's got a high dollar volume of options, but notice it's what it's trending down. It's below the 200 day, so we're just going to skip that one. Move on to another one. And here we do have a stock that's above uh, MedMax, I've never traded that one, but it looks interesting. It's got a nice uptrend. It's above the recent uptrend. It's above the 200-day. So we're going to open up the matrix on that one. 46 days out. What if I sold this one? Let's start with 10 and see what it does. Go up to 15. Minus 14. So there's our 10,000 roughly allocation. Just have to make sure now it's an 80%, you know, it's at least 80%, 96% on that one. I could even go up a little bit higher. Well, maybe not. So what if we went up to the 65 strike? Too much capital and probability of profit still okay. I could just drop it down to a, a 10 lot. And that would be about right. So I'm going to convert that one. That's our second one. So now in the transaction log, it's starting to record these. We want to generate... 20 of these, so uh, I'm not going to go through all 20, but that, that would be the, we're going to do a few less just for time reasons here. But I'll put about five or six in so we can track them forward. So back to the quotes display, we're on MD, next is Amazon, price chart. Amazon at this point is below its 200 day, so we'll have to throw that one out next. Again, that one is price line is below its 200 day. Onward. Monster beverage is above, so we could use that one. <clears throat> Except it doesn't have options showing up. So we'll move on to the next one. Below its 200 day. Next. Above its 200 day. The diamonds. That would be easy. Let's go ahead and put on a diamond position. We'll use the February again. We'll start out just around. This is the shading, actually, is the uh, one standard deviation where it changes color here, is one standard deviation away. So that gives us roughly the probability that we're looking for. We'll start out with a 10 lot and see 
what that does for us. We'll knock that down to a six lot, about 10,000. And yield, 92% probability, that fits. And we'll just uh, go ahead and convert that one. So that's three. Back to the quotes display. Price chart. It's below the 200. Next. Above the 200. And it doesn't have options, though. So we'll move on to the next one. That box that said it doesn't, it can't obtain background information. If it says that, it doesn't have an option matrix. This one is below its 200-day. We'll just move on. And same with that one. Green Mountain Coffee at the time was uh, below its 200. Same with IOC. Some good stocks here, but some of them were uh, in a rough patch there the, the, uh, during the January period of January 12th. So we're still below the 200 on, on the Russell. And that one is above. So Gilead we could use. We'll start a matrix there. And again, we'll pick this. I'm um, going to use this one right about the first standard deviation. We'll go up to a 18 lot. That's about right. And that would give us an 83% probability just within our guidelines. So we'll convert that one over. So now we've got a list of four. And I'll get started with the back test just a minute here. We'll do a couple more of these. Price chart below its 200-day uh, next. That one is above its 200-day. So CF, we're going to go ahead and use that one. So 10 of these. Back it down to 7. That works. 84% probability of profit. And that probability of profit, by the way, is based on the statistical volatility, which gets pulled off of the Volte chart. So whatever the latest reading for the Volte chart is uh, for that asset, 44.1, that's what we see in the matrix uh, for MD. Let's get back to it. CF, rather. So we're going to convert that one. <clears throat> that 44.1 was pulled from the, the Volte chart. And that gives us our shadings both on the, it gives us the shadings on the matrix and the one and two standard deviation bars on the graph. If I change that number, which you can do, it's interactive. You can put something different in there. If I put in 50%, for example, it would change the shadings and the standard deviation range and the probability of profit. So that's an interesting perspective. If you thought the volatility might rise a little bit from its current statistical volatility, you could uh, take a, a hedged approach and say, okay, what if it was this volatility level? Am I still within my guidelines? In this case, you would be. But for this demonstration, we're just using the, the standard, the default, which is this, the statistical volatility for the asset. So I'm going to convert this one over. Now I've got five. We'll go ahead with the back test now. So what I've got is five assets, and we're going to just track them. Uh, <clears throat> we can track them from status and just watch the uh, gain loss. And then if, if it got below uh, a certain level remaining, the value relative to the cost, then we could go ahead and close it out. We could also track it from the matrix. But right now, we're just going to start moving forward one day at a time. And generally, when you're in back trader, you want to move forward at the close rather than any time during the day. You can execute any time during the day for your, when you're putting the position on. But when you're moving forward in back trader, best to set back trader to the, to the close and then start moving forward. So we're going to do that here. That way, you can see the full range of prices for the day and the full result. So we're going to move forward one day. And it's going to change the value according to our positions here. And now it's going to create also a graph based on that value. It just dropped a little bit there. Move forward another day. And again, we can see the, we won't see the individual 
uh, prices of the underlying, but we do see the overall account. We do see the current value of each option position relative to the, the money we collected and the profit and loss, the gain loss. So we can track everything from here. And now we're actually at break even. Just going to keep moving forward until we see something that has a decent profit and where, where we could get about 80%. That's the target. We want 80% roughly of whatever we collected. So we, all, we have about closing in on 50% there, but still nothing at 80%. So we move another day forward. Now we could, if we want to analyze that position and make sure we haven't hit the target, we could go ahead and double click that. And it's going to open up that, that matrix with the position in there and you'll be able to see the, the current gain loss in the, in the gain loss summary section in the matrix. And also if we click analyze, a quick way to calculate if you've hit your target is just put your cursor, or first of all, put the vertical axis on yield. And then we can see in yield terms how much you're up, 19%. So we're, we're at looking for is about 80% or four-fifths of that 29%. Well, we're not quite there. We've got about two-thirds. So we're going to go forward back to status again, forward another day. Uh, unknown. If it says unknown, it's not going to give you a value for that day. Uh, just it looks like the option flipped off the uh, the list here. So what we can do is uh, just add some options in. Go to auto strike. Make the out of the money put extent larger. I went to define. This is how we can add strikes if you need to. Click apply. There it is. So now I've got my position back. And I do need to update, though, since it's not real time, I have to click the Update button, this box with the uh, blue and green arrow in the upper right corner. And there is our price. And now if we go back to status, everything's filled in with a value. And if we have uh, about the same as we had before, we haven't hit the 80% target yet, we'll advance another day. We're getting a little bit closer. None of these are anywhere near the, uh, well, this one is about 60%. You can see that, just a little rough math there. Advance another day. And relative to the amount of capital we have, we're not making a whole lot because uh, it would take a bit of time to get the 20 positions in there, 10,000 for each asset that I would normally do for this approach. Of course, we'd have to spend most of the time just doing that. So that's why we're just good. we're generating a performance graph, but the account yield is going to be a lot smaller than it would be if we were doing the full basket. So now we're we're very close to that 80 percent, 80 percent of the uh, value that we collected. So what I could do is just take the 1981, divide it by 2303, and we're at 86%. So we'll go ahead and close that one out. And to do that, I'm just going to put the counter position, the opposite position in the trade column. So uh, we're going to buy seven, we're going to close it that position out, just click Convert Trade, and it will be gone. So in the transaction log, if the price that you filled at was not exactly what you wanted, if you're doing a real-time account, you can change any of these values here. That You can write whatever you want in there. But in this case, uh, we closed out that trade. It's now going to show up as a realized gain and report. If I click the Realize, you see that we do have a profit of 1953 on that position. And we have still an unrealized loss overall of 1,000. The performance graph is generating a day by day since we're advancing one day at a time. It's giving us an easy look at the current yield on the whole account just below or just above a 1%.
we can click over here and get an exact 1.3 percent. We're up and then we see the max drawdown. In this case, uh, we only have this as a drawdown or in this, so it's uh, less, well less than 1 percent, maybe a tenth of a percent here, two tenths of a percent drawdown versus 1.3 percent uh, the overall return. So that's the value of this graph here. You want to be able to not only see your overall return, but the max drawdown. And uh, it's only going to create one value per day, though. If you went back, if you saw a corrupt value in here, say this one uh, had no, you, you missed the, the option, went off the matrix and didn't give you a value, and somehow uh, the value ended up way down or way high, uh, too, too high showing an unrealistic profit or loss. You can just go back to that date, click on the, the date of the error. Instead of redoing everything and scrapping the whole test, just click on that date, find the date, go back to that date in Backtrader. Make sure you got all the data coming in in the matrix and you have a price for each option position you have, and that'll straighten it out. It'll overwrite whatever was there previously. No need to start over. So now we want to get another one going here. We could look at the price chart and just make sure it's still above the 200-day it is. So we're going to go back to that matrix. And that is 32 days remaining, so we could use this option. Eighty-nine percent probability. And about 10,000, you drop it down to minus 6 and convert it. <clears throat> so now we got the next position on. We'll carry on. Back to status. And you see there's uh, this one actually looks like it's got 80% of the gain. So we're going to go capture the profit on that one. That is a little bit of a problem. It should have options. We'll just go back a little bit and see if it fills in. Sometimes if you just back up, if you're missing data, you can just back up in half an hour. Okay. Another trick is to go to the quotes display, right click on the symbol, delete the asset file, and restart it. unless they discontinued options, that is very strange. All right, we'll just carry on. We could manually close that position out in the transaction log. I could just type in the date here. time. <clears throat> We're going to buy to close. We're going to buy back 18 contracts. We're going to use the same symbol. Just copied and pasted it. It's an option. And the price will say is 80% of the 60s, 80% reduction. So if I take 60 divided by 5, we'll call it 12 cents. It was actually a little bit more. Call it 11 cents. A little bit more profit. $18 commission, and we just manually closed it out. Go on. So now we need another one if we're running a, certain, a fixed amount of assets. Back to the quote display. We'll try the next one here, price chart. That's above the 200-day. Open up a matrix. 
I'll try selling this one. 30 days to go. That just barely fits. That's about 10,000 worth. Make sure we're within the, well, within the probability of profit limit. We'll convert that one over. So now we've got another one going. Back to status, and we'll continue advancing. <clears throat> now this one uh, is losing quite a bit. We should check and see if it hit, if it hit the short strike. Delete the file. There's our position. That worked that time. We deleted the file and created a new one. Uh, did it hit the short strike? We're at 51. Our strike was 41. So we are nowhere near getting stopped out on that one. So that's good news. In fact, we go to status and advance. Another day. Now this test is working, but if it wasn't, say you advanced a couple of three months through a one-year test and you found out that the maximum drawdown in the report that you're generating, the performance graph, was an unacceptably large drawdown. So you had a 20% drawdown on the account um, it, within a couple of months of running, starting the test. You could just throw it out and uh, you would start a new test. Go into create a new document, create a new account, go back to the starting date, pick some new stocks and change the rules a little bit, and carry on with the ne next test. No need to continue a test that is not going to work, but in this case it's working. We're making money consistently. We haven't been stopped out on anything, and uh, so we'll just continue on. And this one looks like it's getting close to the 80%. <clears throat> if we can pull that one up. So we've got 732 realized, unrealized versus uh, 984, 74%. Not quite on that one. And onward. One little trick in Backtrader that uh, if you notice, it's updating pretty quickly, but if you do notice it's kind of slow, it could be because your quotes display is loaded up with a bunch of symbols. In this case, I've just only started this, this program. Uh, <clears throat> so it's not really bogging it down. But if you, if you wanted to, you could close out the quotes display and then just reopen it using the window tab if you needed it again. But in the meantime, things would run a little bit quicker because it's not updating each symbol in the quotes display as you advance. Everything updates. Whatever's in the quotes display, whatever's in your matrix, all updates to that next date that you're advancing to. So if we close this out, it's going to have less to update. It's going to go a little bit quicker depending on how long of a test you're doing and how many times you need to go back into the quotes display for new symbols then you just may want to close it out and, and move forward. And now it should go just a little bit quicker. It's been pretty quick since we're updating five matrices. It's been not bad at all. But now it is going just a bit quicker. So let's check. This one looks like it's about ready to be pulled off. It's got 80% of the gain. Uh, it's way down here somewhere. Where is it? There's the position. And that one is definitely below. We missed it a little bit. By the way, if you were close to a trigger on any one position, you can advance. Uh, I could back up to, to where it was 
about if I take uh, 135 divided by 5. So I was looking for 27 cents as my trigger. Let's say you were at 30 cents and you wanted to just exactly nail the, the rule, the 80% profit taking rule. You could advance by one half hour uh, or click three times and advance by an hour and a half rather than just advancing a full day. In this case, for time reasons, I'm just going to close it out. We hit our target, it's done, buy six back, closed. Check the price chart on the diamonds. <clears throat> I have to go back to the quotes display now. Back to our list. Diamonds still above the 200 day. So we could enter a new one in the March with the 50 days remaining. So I could come here and sell six of those. Gives us 12,000, five, about 10,000 worth. 8%, 93% probability of profit. Go ahead and convert that one over. We got the next position going. So that's how you can create a beautiful back test with a full performance graph and update it every single day. If you wanted to go a little bit faster, if you were, you know, going to go, wanting to go through several years worth of uh, testing, you can go uh, two to three days at a time, and I would still say that would be okay. But if you did notice a large change in the value, something happened perhaps, there was a big drop, you'd probably want to capture that data point on your graph for max drawdown purposes, then you'd want to back it up. So you'd have to keep an eye. If you're going to jump by more than a day at a time, then I would suggest you keep an eye on the value if it changes dramatically at any point. You may want to just go through that one day at a time, that period. Otherwise, just continue on uh, at two or three days at a clip. So the faster you uh, run through, then the more likely you're going to compromise the test, is what I would say. If you can advance uh, in five seconds from one day to the next, it's not a huge difference in time as long as you're getting this quick up, quick of an update. So that's essentially how you go about it. And then uh, if you wanted to, if you were happy with this result, but you still want it, by the way, you can get performance analysis results here. So the annualized return is turning out to be 0.9%. Remember, we didn't complete the full allocation, so that is kind of low, but this is the important numbers, the return versus the max percent drawdown. If you want to compare those two numbers, you can see that easily on the performance analysis. So we did have a big, a relatively big drawdown there. Uh, so that's the key information. And now if you uh, want to, if you're happy with this result, but you thought maybe tweaking the rules a little bit would give you a better result, if you wanted to be a little bit more aggressive, sell closer to the money puts and see how that would have done over that same period of time, would that give you a better yield or a worse one because you got stopped out more often? That's the kind of thing that you would be checking for with your back testing. Create another test, let's call it test two, and run through with a new rule over the same test period uh, and see if that would generate a better return. And you can compare one performance graph to the other. Put them up in a, uh, you can use the screen capture and just compare one to the other in the same document or just print them out. Uh, if you use XPS document writer, image writer, you can, there's no way to print this graph in option view, but you can use XPS document image writer. It does a very nice job of capturing the graphs in option view, and then you just put them in a document. You've got a record of it. You can compare easily or share between uh, friends you're trading with. So there we go. I'm going to close out of the screen sharing here and just see if there's any questions. Before we wrap it up for the day, uh, let's see. Yeah, Bob asked why the status screen is open. So Bob, it, that is very important. If you don't keep status open, the program has no way to calculate the value of the account, and hence you'll get no result, or you get a, a straight line of a graph going uh, from the beginning of your test to the end. It'll just be a straight line with no data points in between. When you're doing real-time trading and you want to track the value of your account, you can do it via the file. 
the very upper left file, Assess Account window. Uh, say I wanted to track the value of that particular account each day. I want to create a value for it every trading day at the close. We'll call it 1530 is my close time. Two things I settled out. I could set that event up and it's going to basically create a, a value based on the status value of that account each day. But when you're in BackTrader and it's not open, that assessment of account does not occur. So that one is uh, really important. And let's see. <clears throat> Jim asks, uh, why not add percent gain in the status to see whether the target is reached? Good suggestion, Jim, as always. <laughs> we'll entertain that one. I, I agree. That would make it a lot less laborious as far as uh, re hitting your target. Roger says, excellent. Uh, <clears throat> I copied some. Okay. Thanks, Roger. Appreciate the positive commentary on that. All right. Well, uh, thank you all for attending, and that was this version of Option View Essentials. And uh, we'll do another one and uh, continue on with the back trader, trader quest and try to create the perfect back trader demonstration that gives uh, enough perspective in a short enough time. So I think I'm getting a little closer. Those of you who have seen the previous ones, maybe not quite as concise and uh, not quite as uh, well organized, but getting a little better at it, I think. So we'll keep at it, and uh, I think there's a lot, there's so much to do with BackTrader that it can't hurt to continue. We'll do another one next month. Talk to you then. Thanks again for attending, everyone. Bye.